Welcome. My name is John Zadar, and I am excited today to bring you up to date on TBPMF. That is Tetra Biopharma. Folks, this company is about to explode. The next 30, 90, and 180 days are going to take this stock from 10x to 100x easily. And in a year, it could touch 1,000x or more. I am not exaggerating. Tetra Biopharma is doing some wonderful history-making things that are literally going to change how the world manages pain, the most severe pain. They have drugs that are working on inflammation of body organs that can save lives. They have patents on new ideas that have never been seen before, and these tests and trials are happening now. Tetra Biopharma is a R&D company. They do research and development looking for new novel drugs that can help. They are a cannabinoid company. They only deal with cannabis. Now, don't get turned off here, folks, because this is an expert company. They have been recognized for their scientific research. They have studied every molecule that you inhale when you burn and smoke marijuana, CBD, THC, and all the other hundred compounds. They know it better than anyone. And they've proved it by coming out with drugs that are already being used in Canada, already being used in Malta, Europe, Germany, the Nordic countries. But it is here right now that they are launching through the FDA, which is going to commercialize this to over $200 billion market. Now, I don't want to talk about what I think. I want to tell you exactly the facts. I'm going to start off with an article that came out in June in 2020 by the CEO himself. And it tells you what is going to happen and what it is for. Very informative. And I've got it bulleted for us. Then I want to just go through these last couple of months of news headlines unbelievable what they're going through and then each one of those i will try to back up with a twitter comment that expounds with a little bit more information from the company themselves we're not going to look at what other people think we're not chasing down opinions this is just the facts and finally i will end it with a uh, last management uh, discussion that they had with us in february which brings us all up to date I think you'll find this very informative and not dragged out. So let's jump into this right now. So this article here was written by Guy Chamberlain, who is the CEO of the company. He also is a scientist with a PhD. He is the head brains of this company. This is his article, so this is information we can trust. I've highlighted some points here I think are quite important that expound on what the company is doing and why he's doing it. Cannabinoids may be useful in treating chronic pain, reducing opioid use, and helping relieve pain and suffering where traditional pharmaceutical and alternative therapies have failed. In that case, they could become a game changer in how we deal with pain. I became convinced that the only way that cannabinoid therapeutics would be incorporated into traditional healthcare system was by following a classic drug development program. Discovering how inhaled cannabis works and learning the pharmacokinetics of how pain relieving chemicals are delivered to the central nervous system was key to the research we do at Tetra. Fast forward and we can currently investigating COMS, a cannabinoid derived medicine that uses synthetic THC and CBD delivered to the patients using an inhaler called the Mighty Medic, a medical device created by Stolz and Bickel, a wholly owned subsidiary of Canopy Growth, another marijuana company. The device is currently approved for use in Canada and is under review by the U.S. Food and Drug Administration as part of an approval process for COMS. This is a small pill that you actually vaporize and inhale. COMS is being investigated for two indications. Our phase two and three clinical trials called Serenity will study COMS as a treatment to improve physical functioning and for modulating cachea progression in patients with advanced cancer. Cancer cachea remains an unmet medical need even though an estimated 50 to 80% of cancer patients suffer from it. 
A further phase two trial called Reborn, which is happening right now, is a head-to-head -head study investigating the efficacy of calms versus immediate release oral opiates to measure pain intensity and the onset of action for breakthrough pain in cancer patients. We are optimistic that COMS is qualified for several FDA regulatory pathways that would see the time needed to have the drug approved and market considerably reduced, and it is. It's already being tested right now. Reborn One is a test. I do believe Quicksleaf is involved as well. Quicksleaf is the botanical version of their THC CBD terpene drug and uh, COMS is the synthetic version. Synthetic versions are more preferred by doctors because you know they're absolutely pure and there is no scientific difference between the botanical version and the synthetic. What is extremely important here is that they've never taken a botanical cannabis and made it a drug. That is what's amazing. Another of Tetra's cannabinoid derived drugs undergoing phase two clinical trial is in the plenitude test in the United States is Quicksleaf, an inhaled medicine that is being tested for treatment of uncontrolled pain in advanced cancer patients. Unlike COMS, which is based on synthetic cannabinoid, Quicksleaf is a botanical product that uses dried flower buds. Imagine that, the FDA approving dried flower buds vaped for cancer pain. And not only that, folks, if I haven't mentioned it, this inhaled vaporized medicine relieves pain virtually instantly. Anyone who smokes marijuana, how long does it take for you to feel the marijuana after you've taken a hit or two? It's just that fast. Instant pain relief. What is that worth? Non-addictive, no side effects. Oh, and did I mention you need more? Go ahead and take it. It's not going to kill you. You can't OD on it. Wow. All right. Orphan drug designation. Tetra has also received FDA orphan drug designation for the THC in the treatment of, oh boy, do I have to say this? It's a liver disease. Yes, they've got one for liver disease. They have one for bladder inflammation disease. Uh, it's just, it goes on and on. And this is what I would call a miracle drug. Um, clinical research and impact. It would be nearly impossible to talk about our pharmaceutical research without acknowledging the impact COVID-19 had. They, this opened up a door for them to try something and they discovered that their science could be used for COVID and septus and other lung problems with their drugs, ARDS003 which is being used for quite a lot of things. With a crisis also comes opportunity. Tetra's decades long research and ophthalmologics created a further opportunity to study the anti-inflammatory properties of our drug candidate, PPP003 for a second indication, cytokine release syndrome. First off, the drug was invented for eye ulcers. That's what the drug was invented for, eye ulcers. But they found that it works for cytokine release syndrome, which is a condition that when the body goes into protecting itself and fending itself from infections, it overdoes its job and actually ends up attacking their own body. And they hurt themselves. And that's when organs start shutting down. This calms the body down, soothes it like petting a dog, and the body stops doing that. Under an accelerated timeline, a potential drug for CRS could be ready and conditional upon approval health. These drugs, every drug that we are looking at right now has been moved fast forward and ahead. Most of the drugs are in phase two trials. Phase two trials take between two and three years and cost oh, an average of $20 million. They've got their phase two trials down to four weeks and 10 weeks and cost less than $2 million with answers like that because they're head to head. The person with cancer takes their pill today for morphine. How fast did that start your pain relief? Then tomorrow they will use Quicksleaf or Calms and measure how fast the pain relief is. 
Just that easy. Bottom line answers. Okay, that is the end of that article. So that tells us what they have going. They had lots of different trials planned for lots of different drugs. So let's see what's happening. They have jumped into it and we are swimming right now. All right, now I've made this real easy for us. I've just taken uh, screenshots of the top bullets of these articles so we don't have to go from page to page and look at the bullets like we did with the article here. I'm just going to go through them. There's only six weeks worth of news. Now with most companies, you'd be lucky to get one, two pieces of news in six weeks. This company has so much news, it's very difficult to keep up with it. Articles are coming out and it's still, still under the radar, which is unbelievable. All right, we're going to start with the very first one here, which was just on May 6th. This was the announcement that they started the reborn trial. Tetra Biopharma announces start of the Reborn One clinical trial, FDA USA trial. First ever phase two clinical trial designed to evaluate the effect of cannabis against an opiate treatment. Quick Sleep has the potential to transform the pain market. This is the one where they are just going to have the person take the pill and then the next day try the Quick Sleep for Calms. And it's going to be very quick. And once this information comes out, folks, that they have a pain reliever that works fast, that is non-addictive, that can't kill you and you can't OD on and has no side effects, this is going to be headline news. And when Tetra Biopharma's name is put next to this news, what do you think this stock is going to do? Honestly. And that's only one thing happening right now. Uh, the trial is designed to evaluate the effect of the company's inhaled proprietary drug formulation Quicksleaf against the immediate release oral morphine sulfate on onset of pain relief in people living with cancer. Quicksleaf is a botanical drug with a fixed ratio of THC and CBD and is inhaled through a class 2 medical device vaporizer, which we just read about. It's not just any amount of CBD and THC. They have learned the balance. I mean, just exactly how much. And then they use a terpene. Terps are what uh, a lot of your beer and brewery companies use for flavor and aroma. They've learned that these are like bullets, arrows that you can aim directly at specific points of reference in the nervous system. They're experts at what they do and they're proving it right now and we can capitalize on it. Now this is the uh, tweet that came out the same day. Uh, the company announces the start of a revolutionary clinical trial to eval evaluate cannabis for the management of breakthrough cancer pain. Cannabis versus morphine. Come on folks, I don't know what sports event you watch, but you can't think of any two competitors that stand up stronger than this right here. Cannabis against morphine. And to think, for 80 years, this country has said that cannabis had no medicinal value. Whew. Somebody got that wrong, didn't they? All right, the next piece of news came just a day before, May 5th. Tetra Biopharma signs a definitive distribution agreement with DanCan Pharma to monetize its Drona Benal and botanical product portfolios. This definitive agreement is expected to generate in excess of 47 million Canadian dollars in revenue for Tetra. Tetra is an R&D. Tetra is research and development. All they do is study to find novel drugs. They don't have the facilities or the capital to take a drug to market. That's not what they do. They spend a lot of money during research, and they did, about $40 million. But they're done. The research is done. You are here at the right time. The table's been set. The, the music is playing. Everything is ready. All you've got to do is come to the party. Now, this is a great agreement here because they have not been making any revenues at all. And now is when the revenue boat comes and it's going to be a Titanic. They are looking at a $200 billion market with the drugs they have that are going to come out this year. Not next year, not two years from now, this year. And Denmark isn't even working in the USA. We're just getting to it. 
See here, the signing of a definitive agreement with Dan Can Pharma for the exclusive distribution of Reduvo, Adversa, Quicksleaf, and Njaqua in Denmark, Norway, Sweden, Finland, and Germany. You see, folks, these, these countries would not be using the drug if it was experimental. The FDA is the big league. We got bases loaded and Babe Ruth at bat. The other countries are on board, but they're waiting for the FDA to say, this is good. And you know what? We need it. Not just for pain relief, but the opioid crisis. Come on, folks. Just that in itself is worth a billion dollars. Now, let me go through here. I am going to touch on to them, but Reduvo is a drug for chemotherapy nausea. It has just been approved in Canada, as you will see, and rumor has it, and I wasn't going to mention this until later because not everything I know I can actually find online to prove, but people have spoke about in videos, the CEO, Sean Black, the number one investor. Uh, but they say, I have heard somebody somewhere say that Reduvo is already approved in America. There is just a reason that it hasn't been brought to the surface. Then we have Adversa. I do believe Adversa is for the bladder condition. Uh, this is a drug to help that pain. Quicksleaf, we've been talking about, and Injaqua. Injaqua is Quicksleaf. But Quicksleaf, you could sell at a cannabis dispensary and make money with it. No big deal because it's a cannabis product and cannabis products are legal. However, Injaqua is the same product under a prescription. Now it's a medicine for certain areas where cannabis isn't even legal anyways and you couldn't buy it. But if you have it as a medicine, you can sell it. So they've got both markets depending on where they sell it geographically. Uh, the agreement encompasses a sum of upfront and milestone payments of 1.5 and expected cumulative royalties of an excess of 46 million. So from what I gather, they've already got that first 1.5 million. So now they're bringing money in. We'll take a quick look at their financials, but they've made no money, none. They do nothing. That's not their job. So they have made no money. And for the last four years, five years, it's just been pouring money out. The investors that got in early have really held on tight because R&Ds, biofarms, biotechs, they're just little leeches that have to suck money from somebody somewhere to keep it going. But that's all done. Next piece of news here. Uh, this came out May 4th, one day before that, every single day. Tetra Biopharma reactivates veterinary clinical study in companion animals. This is their PPP0003V version, veterinary. This is the same drug that they were using for human eye ulcers. This is the same drug they are using for septus. Septus kills over 10 million people a year right now. And with the onset of COVID, more septic cases are coming to surface. Any lung disorder which gets out of control with Sitocone syndrome kicking in and inflammation and fluids not moving and suffocation, that's what these drugs were meant for. So you have it for eye ulcers for dogs, eye ulcers for people, septus, inflammation this drug is an unbelievable and you can see right here with the crisis also comes opportunity tech rate i just told you this so the same drug is being used for so many things and proven to work these aren't experiments they're actually doing their job they just need to get a tick of approval and boom they're going to be sold and this company is not going to sell off they're not going to sell the company because there's too much money at stake. Right now, they're about 125 million market cap. If the stock went to $30, it would be a $1.5 billion market cap. Do I think it'll get to $30? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Probably in the next 90 days. When this news comes out that morphine got its butt kicked by CBD and THC that can't hurt you, folks, come on. Wow. All right. Next piece of news. Day before that, May 3rd. You got to love a company that gives you news every day. 
Tetra Biofarm granted a drug establishment license to distribute Reduvo soft gel capsules in Canada. This is for chemotherapy nausea. Now, folks, something I haven't mentioned. This is a great example to tell you. Reduvo is good for chemotherapy nausea. Do you think maybe it could be used for other types of nausea? Maybe pregnancy? Hey, it's safe. It's only CBD, right? Do you think uh, any type of nausea? Yes. And these come in under open indications in America. Uh, the quick sleep for pain relief on cancer has come in under open indicators, which means if it works for cancer pain, won't it work for other pains as well? Just as well? So this is going to go under unbranded, unnamed, open indications so that a person in America can ask for it under the Right to Try program. It doesn't have to be on the market for a consumer to make use of it. And if they're in pain and the doctor says, well, if you don't have a problem with vaping, I've got a drug here that can give you instant pain relief, no side effects, and don't worry about getting addicted to it. Would you like to try that? We believe that's going to open up the market huge. The market's going to open up in so many different directions. And we are expecting that when you do that, you're going to put big pharmacy companies who sell morphine and Percocets and oxycodone and all these other pain relievers that cause us more problems than good and take so long to work out of financial gains that they're going to come to this company, but they're not going to sell. They're looking for joint ventures where they can give the rights to a company to sell it and put it on the market. And then we get all the royalties with milestone payments and the company will just get bigger and bigger without having to do any work or pay any money out. Whew. Am I exciting you yet? All right. So this is the chemo drug for nausea. That was on May 3rd. Oh, Woo, they took a break. We get all the way back to April 28th now. Tetra Biopharma submits request for scientific advice to Malta Medicines Authority. Now, see, this went over a lot of people's heads. The stock's already under the radar. Malta is basically a gateway into Europe, as is Germany for Europe. But in these, if you can work into these countries with your drugs, you can get the whole blooming uh, continent. So this company is right now working on many very smart ways of getting their products into each niche of the market without missing areas like in Jaqua and Quicksleaf. They've done many things to cover all the bald spots and hairy spots of the market. They have plans to make billions and billions of dollars and we can be a part of that. What it says down here is a leader in cannabinoid derived drug discovery and development announced today that it has submitted a request to the Malta Medicines Authority for a scientific opinion on its investigational new drug Quicksleaf for Tetra's clinical trial programs. This request includes guidance on the Reborn 2 Reborn 2 trial. This is a whole second trial based on the first one, right? To be performed in Europe. Quicksleep is a botanical drug product with a fixed ratio of THC and CBD and is inhaled through a vaporizer. And we follow it up with a tweet from Tetra Biofarm. Reborn 2 aims to evaluate the effect of three strengths of Tetra's inhaled cannabis drug Quicksleep compared to morphine sulfate immediate release. I didn't know they had three strengths. Now, maybe America's only getting one. Maybe we will get three. But we know that Europe's getting three different strengths of pain relief. Think about that. They, they, they have so much control with the CBD and THC that they can actually control how strong it is for severe pain, little pain. I'm impressed. I really am. All right. April 15th, Tetra Biopharma announces granting of a U.S. patent for treatment of that's the bladder problem. I can't say that word. Don't make me, please. Tetra strengthens its intellectual property portfolio. Approximately 12% of women may have early symptoms of the bladder and uh, pelvic pain. Uh, let's see. A granting of the new patent from the United States Patent and Trademark Office for 
patent applications. The patent covers a method for treatment of this disease. They've got patents coming out. They have got, speaking of patents, I was going to cover this later too. Now, this is something I can't prove, but it was mentioned by uh, Sean Black, and I do believe the CEO guy mentioned it in one of his recent interviews online, is that they received a patent here in the United States, I'm going to blow your mind here, for inhaled, <laughs> inhaled cannabinoid, inhalation of cannabinoids. They own the rights to inhaling cannabis. If anybody sells a joint, a pipe, a vapor uh, system that you have to use to inhale cannabis, CBDs or THC into your lungs, you got to pay this company a royalty. Now, I know that sounds ridiculous, but the way I read and understood this, and I believe it was Sean Black who went and said this, he is the number one investor in this company, just under Afria, who has under 10%, which is by law the limit. And then you have Sean Black, who's the number one retail investor like me and you. He hobnobs with the company. So I figure what he tells us is pretty much true. And what he had mentioned was that they have the science to back up their patent which is how patents are granted. They're granted on science, not just an idea or concept. You've got to prove it works. And this company has studied everything. There's nobody who knows more than Tetra Biofarm, at least nobody that's come forward. And you know why that is in America? We haven't even been allowed to study marijuana because it has no medicinal benefits. So nobody's been allowed to even look at it. Israel has been studying it for close to two decades now. Obviously, in Canada, they've got 12 years under their belt, Tetra Biofarm. We in America are pretty much ignorant. So, the technology, the science is being brought to us, and we get to approve it. And then, you and I can invest in a Canadian company that is breaking all of the standards for what medicines are supposed to be. All right. Sorry about that. I am just so excited about this company. Truly am. All right. There was a uh, tweet to go along with that. Uh, further, the development of the cannabinoid treatment for interstitial statistics was one of Panag Pharma assets acquired by Tetra and licensed to CB2 Therapeutics, a shared venture between Tetra and Thorn Health Tech. The company announces the granting. Oh, right. The drug product should be commercialized by the second quarter of 2022. Now, there's a couple things you can pick up here. First off, they have made another deal with this company right there, Panag Pharma. And they created a secondary company called CBD Therapeutics. And through this company, they are selling this drug. Like I said, they are creating avenues. They are building the roads to get their products out there. They may not be a company that's supposed to bring it to market, but that isn't stopping them from doing the best that they can. I'm very impressed by the management's uh, duties and uh, initiatives with this company. All right, this one came from April 5th. We're just about a month back now. FDA provides positive feedback on Tetra Biofarm's application for ARDS-003 clinical development COVID-19 patients. ARDS is Acute Respiratory Distress Syndrome. Now, they didn't have a name for this drug until just the other day right here. Um, the WHO, you know, the World Health Organization, check that out. The World Health Organization has selected a name for this drug. If that doesn't tell you the big boys are involved, I didn't. I just recognize that now. Boy, the name Anternabez, of course they had to use some foreign language to name it. Anternabez, the international non-proprietary name for HU308 will now be used to identify the active pharmaceutical ingredient in our proprietary formulations of ARDS-0003, PPP-003, and PPP-003V. So we have the eye, the uh, lung inflammation, and we have the dog's eyes. All brought into the same thing, and the WHO organization has named it. 
It just keeps getting better. And this is happening now, folks. You're hearing about this just in time. This news came from March 30th. March 30th. Right. Health Canada provides positive feedback on Tetra Bio Farms application for ARDS to be studied in COVID patients at risk for developing acute respiratory distress syndrome. Health Canada acknowledges that preclinical safety data are robust and sufficient to file clinical trial applications aimed at treating hospitalized COVID-19 patients. ARDS is the leading cause of mortality in patients with COVID-19 and develops in 20 to 67% of critically ill patients diagnosed with COVID. There is currently no standard approved treatment for ARDS rendering the indication a significant unmet medical need. And from what I understand, this has been moved to fast track. Yes, it has. Of course it has. COVID is an epidemic, pandemic, and it hasn't left us yet. This is over a year, folks, and people are still dying. And even without COVID, septis still kills people every year. And if we can have a drug that you can't get addicted to, that doesn't just relieve the pain, but cures the, the inflammation and gets people back to being healthy, that's a whole nother market of revenue. Billions and billions of dollars. So let's recap here. TB PMF now has three drugs in advanced clinical stages, which expects to bring to market in 2022. And that's not true. The CEO himself has said in his last interview, uh, probably the third interview back, he's been on a lot here recently, that he anticipated 2022 to be the year that these were going to come out. But because of the momentum, the headway, the proof and concept that is laying on the table, just ready to be recognized. He anticipates that all these drugs will be out by Q3 of this year. Folks, that's six months ahead of schedule. These drugs hit the market. It is going to carry this stock from 40 cents, which it is approximately now, to probably $30. Now, let me give you a little um, understanding about the money that can happen here. I'm done on this page. Let me jump over here and talk to you. I want you to understand what we are really looking at here. GWP, I'm sorry, uh, is a pharmaceutical company that made the very first ever and only to this point CBD drug. They made it for epilepsy and it helps children who have these numerous fits a day to virtually one or none a day. The drug was approved by the FDA, which is why CBDs are not just flooding the market in all of our foods right now, because the FDA still considers it a drug, so they want to study it. Anyways, that company was a little, uh, not super little, but they were a little penny stock, you know, back 2018, 2017, doing R&D research into the cannabis market. And now they are roughly $220, $240 a share. And they were up at $300 a share when things were good on the cannabis market. Folks, that's a thousand X from where we are sitting. A thousand X. That means that a hundred dollars could bring you $100,000 gain. A hundred dollar investment will bring you a hundred thousand dollar gain. I know that sounds ridiculous, but folks, we are looking at a drug that everybody in America and the world could use for pain relief. Do you know anybody that doesn't suffer from pain? We have an opioid crisis, which has to be fixed. What is that worth? We have the fact that you can use this on all the cancer patients. Thank God. And that's going to be a big revenue. You have Reduvo for probably any type of nausea. That's going to make all kinds of money. You have the liver disease, the eye uh, uh, ulcers for dogs, and, and I'm sure they're going to be coming out with more veterinary uh, drugs. It's going on and on and on. Folks, we're looking at a $200 billion market easily. This stock could go far, far above $300. Look at the pharmacies out there right now. How much are they making selling chemicals that hurt us as much as help us? 
What do you think a miracle drug company is going to do that has no drugs that hurt you, no chemicals you're ingesting, and helps the world feel better without taking on more garbage? It's exciting. All right, let's take a look over here at just a couple more things before we take off. Now, when looking at an OTC stock, you need to come over to the OTCmarkets.com. This is the official legitimate site for financials, disclosures, and all the information about the stock itself. This is the legitimate authorized site by FINRA and the SEC to get those details. So this is TBMF on the OTC markets, currently at 23.24 cents. Good, good price. It has been lower, but down to 19 cents. I bought in at 30 and was happy at 30. <laughs> yes, I am. Now this is a QB stock. What is a QB stock? Real quick, there's three tiers on the OTC market. Pinks are good stocks, but there's only so much transparency. Only so much information is given to us. The QB is where pinks go when they want to put their best foot forward and give more information to the investors. They become more transparent. Good place to go. And the QX are the best stocks. These guys could be on the NASDAQ or New York Stock Exchange, except there is some legal reason preventing them from actually being able to be there. So this is where they go. So this is a better stock. Take notice too that real-time level two quotes is open. Why do I say it's open? Well, the company, Tetra here, had to pay $3,000 to this site to get this to work for me and you. Level two quotes are the queue or the line of buyers and sellers before the sales and purchases happen. You can see how many they wanna buy and how much they're willing to pay. Very good information. Down here you get the aftermarket, what's happened after that, and the news and the filings down here. Now I do wanna point out their share count. This is a Canadian company, so they do not have to list how many authorized shares they have, but I assure you it's not unlimited. They do have a definite set number. They have just over 400 million on the market for sale. This is for everybody, management, insiders, and us. Shares just for us, the investors traded every day on the open market is 354 million. Not a bad share count. Could be better, could be worse, this isn't bad. And with the value that this stock is going to be showing in the future, I think it's a good share count. One last thing I wanna show you is right here, the management discussion and analysis. Now this is packed with information, just loaded. Let's go take a look at this. This was February 28th, 2021. Now I advise you come over here on your own time and read this because I can't go through all of this with you. It is informative. And if you want to know about this company, read this. Um, I couldn't highlight anything in here to remember where to show you, but I do recall reading quite a lot. And in this, they have an entire plan laid out of how they are going to sell their products. They have uh, companies that they have made deals with that I couldn't find any press releases on, but they've got the information in here. Uh, like here, for example, subsidiaries. Fido Pain Pharma, Panag Pharma, we saw that one, Tetra Biopharma Europe, and Jaqua. So now these are all their subsidiaries that are intended to sell on the open market. Get out of there. And you can see what they're selling. Quick sleeve comms and ARDS. ARDS and uh, the other drug. And each one of these are hitting a particular market. Um, equity method. To diversify the company's portfolio, um, they have made investments in targeted pharmaceuticals and talc corporations. They have many things going on. See, there's a lot of information here, folks. And there's no way to cover it all without putting you to sleep. So come on over here to back end of the OTC markets. Here's their companies, uh, CBD Therapeutics and Mark Scientific, two more companies that are working to bring products to the consumers to make money. So again, this is a very important piece of information and this can be found here on the OTC market, put in TBPMF, 
come over here to disclosures right and it is the top one right here that will open up a PDF I believe it is and you can see all that they have here because there's a uh, 51 pages of information and there's more than they have in the news there's more that's here than the CEO or Sean Black talk about. If you're looking for information that Google isn't sharing, right here, folks. So there's all the information for TBPMF. You probably notice I look a wee bit different compared to everything I've been doing earlier. That's because I'm throwing in an update here. Uh, the only real update we can give is that the FDA head-to-head -head trial between Quicksleaf and morphine, which has already been mm, maybe 25 weeks now, obviously was delayed. The problem was the criteria for the patients needed. They only need 20 patients. However, the criteria was very tight for people in stage four cancer with the worst type of pain. And most of these people were in the last few months of their lives. And I don't know how many of them wanted to actually volunteer for the trial. So, what they've done now is they've added other drugs to compete against. I can't remember this precise name of them. It's not just morphine. There's three other drugs, and they are open indications. So, they can come in for other pains besides just this really hard, hard cancer pain. That was done a few weeks ago, and the company said they were going to expedite the trial. And we do believe that we are coming very close to the end of the trial. We are in a dry spell right now for information and everybody is in hold. That's why the stock isn't doing a lot of moving right now. Nobody really wants to do anything. We're waiting. And I expect this to hit $3 in no time at all once we hear any word. $30 flashing behind that. And folks, in my opinion, I'm not licensed, but in my opinion, this stock with what they have, with what we need and the problems it can cure, I see this stock going over $300 in 300 days, a year, absolutely. You've seen the evidence, what do you think? Jump in there, get some more information, I showed you where to get it. You know what I say, the more you know, the more you grow. See you, folks.